Motivation in Motion. Own your moment and get better today. No, we're rolling. Okay, all right. I, I want you to introduce yourself. My name is Calvin Miller. Okay. And um, I've been a coach for close to 40 some years. Yep. And I uh, live in uh, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. And had opportunity to coach uh, many, many good players. Mm-hmm. And I'm just excited, you know, that uh, about them and about, mm-hmm. the, about their life and about what the results of their life. Yeah. And excited about the opportunity, you know, to be a role model for them. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I've had the privilege now to sit down with some of the coaches, and it's just been such a blessing. But you carry a different title, too. <laughs> you want to share that? Well, I was also I'm a, I'm a pastor. Okay. Yeah, I, I've been a minister. I was called in 1973 uh-huh. uh, mm-hmm. when I was play, playing football at OSU. Okay. And then I, I went and told my head coach, which was Jim Stanley at that time. Okay. And I said, I've been called to the ministry. And he said, well, you know, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, on the, on the third Sunday of August, okay. I need to go to Oklahoma City and do my trial sermon. Okay. And, and he said, well, you got it. We're going to make sure you get there. Wow. And so that was a journey uh, in, in my ministry. And so... Now, I was reading up on you a little bit, and I love great stories, so I just need to understand. I want you to tell me about you giving your life to Christ. It's well, a very interesting one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, you know, I was uh, had a really strong religious background. Okay. And for a long time in my, in my upbringing, mm-hmm. you know, we was on we were Wednesday night, we were at church service 10 minutes before the church service started. Okay. We were there on Sunday morning, uh, had very... Uh, strong uh, role models, which my grand- grandparents okay. was in my life. And so they believed in God and, and they trust in God. Mm-hmm. But one day I, I realized, you know, that this is just a fantasy. This is something that we go through. And, mm-hmm. and, and one, one night on a small junior college campus, which is Gulf Coast Junior College, mm-hmm. and there were some guys in chapel were praying and they came out and they came right in front of the, uh, mm-hmm. the, the center of the campus mm-hmm. and they started singing, they started praising. And they were way past curfew. At that time, curfew was at 10 o'clock. Okay. And so many, many of the students broke curfew. And so uh, the, the guys in the athletic department, you know, in the athletic dorm, we broke curfew too. Wow. And so we went out and said, what's going on? And those guys were, were, were praising God, singing songs, and sharing their testimonies. And then I realized that night that it wasn't a fantasy. It was something real. Wow. And, and I, I surrendered myself you know, which a, a rededication to myself, mm-hmm. you know, to my Lord and Savior. Wow. And, uh, and that, that had a great impact on my life. And From that moment day. forward, you were convicted. Yes. You knew, you knew that it was real. Yes. It was no longer a fantasy. No, no longer a fantasy. I, I, it's, it's funny you use that word. I've never really thought of that word in association to yeah. it, even when you grow, grow up in a faith-based home. Right. Because right. They, they had had their calling, right? And they right. had been grounded right. in age. But right. you're just watching them and going, well, I don't, yeah. I don't believe this. Yeah. It's just a fantasy. That's right. I believe in good things, but I, have, right. I don't, I don't right. see it. And then you're convicted. Yeah. Right. There's a time you get to really find out for yourself. Mm-hmm. And I was away from home on a small junior college campus. Mm-hmm. I thought would be in a, you know, being uh, a, a, a good football player would kick the trash can in and spit on the wall and do all right. that stuff. Uh-huh. But I realized, you know, that there was, there was more to it than that. Uh-huh. And, and I realized that I can be a football player and yep. also, you know, and, and live out my faith. And, and, and so these and all these things that I was my upbringing, mm-hmm. it came back to roost. And it, it, it's, this is real. This is good. Yeah. Well, and I've, I've obviously studied up a little bit around you. So uh, so now you go from junior college to play some real football. Yes. Right? Uh, yes. So share a little bit about that. Well, it, it, uh, I transferred from uh, when I come out of high school, mm-hmm. I, I, I really had an offer to Ole Miss. Okay. You know, but but you know, at that time, you know, you, you had Orton Manning and all those, the, mm-hmm. you know, the, the the running rebel and all that. But my grades were not good enough, mm. and so and so, I took the ACT test, and then I had an offer to Mississippi Valley State, and so I went to Mississippi Valley State. Okay. I stayed there a summer and a semester. Okay. And I realized, you know, that it was just a. Uh, we had a, a large number of people come mm-hmm. in to play football, and mm-hmm. it was just another number. And I transferred from Mississippi, Mississippi Valley State to Gulf Coast Junior College. Okay. And that year before I transferred, they had they had went 12 and 0. Okay. And they, they had beat for they, they beat Fort Scott, Kent, Kansas, and uh, they met them in the, in the national championship. Okay. And Gulf Coast had won, 
And so, so they were reloading, and mm-hmm. I transferred in. And you know, of course, I was out of Harrison County, which was at that time they, they, had, they, had, they had counties that you had, you had that that uh, everybody went to a certain school. Okay. And so Harrison County, uh, all on the coast went to Gulf Coast Junior College. Okay. And so I transferred, I transferred back, transferred back to Gulf Coast. And uh, Coach George CQ was the coach. Coach mm-hmm. Harrison was 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 the uh, was my D line coach. Mm-hmm. Coach Dillingham was was the uh, secondary coach. And so uh, I transferred back, and that spring had a had a good spring. Uh, it felt really good about myself. Mm-hmm. You know, it felt really good about the team. And then and then uh, that year we went in the season, and I think we were nine and two. Mm-hmm. And and during that season, uh, you know, I had, you know had a lot of. A uh, great accomplishment, mm-hmm. some records that was set, you know. But also, I I, res- I got I got a chance to be offered a chance to go to the All Star Game, Mississippi Junior College All Star okay. Game, and there I go to the All Star Game, and that is it's a wonderful setting uh, uh, in uh, Everett Presley hometown, uh, up in the upper part of uh, mm-hmm. Mississippi. Jerry Jerry Cloud was there. They had a you know a big mm-hmm. big big night, nice situation, and so they had the game, and then I I uh, ha- was fortunate enough to play that game. Mm-hmm. And in that game, I was, I was one of the most valued players that a defensive player of, the, of that game. Wow! And so many schools had offered me opportunity. Okay. Uh, Pittsburgh, uh, a lot of schools, mm-hmm. but there was a coach named uh, uh, Roland Rainey from Oklahoma State okay. came in, and, uh, and he said, "How would you like to play for the Cowboys?" And I said, I "Never heard of it. How you like to go to Oklahoma?" <laughs> As we're sitting here in Oklahoma, you're going to obsess about. Be yeah, careful, yeah. Calvin. You still have a little bit of coaching left to do. I thought it was Oklahoma sooner, <laughs> but no, it was Oklahoma State Cowboys. And so uh, we set up a visit, you know, mm-hmm. and I had an opportunity, you know, to come up on a visit. Yep. And there's another guy that came along with me by the name of S.L. Stephen, and S.L. Stephen was an officer guard. And uh, that that was a good good player, mm-hmm. and and he was really famous for later on uh, playing against Iowa State, jumping off the bench, tackling the guy on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta go find that. Okay. <laughs> and so, but uh, but we came together and and we, we walked around campus and and uh, we, uh-huh. we we uh, we uh, you know toured the facility. We said we looked at each other and said, "Man, this is it. Yeah, this is it." And and doing that, do, and doing that, it was a connection. You know, in in that that night when I accepted Christ, you know that connection that 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 the Lord was sending me mm-hmm. out of out of out of Mississippi, to, you know, to West, and and that West, you know, seemed like it's, we say kept saying West, 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 and then all all of a sudden, I, I believe I had a vision that this was the place I needed to come, to, Oklahoma wow. State. Wow. And well, you've just uh, you can get away with it because you play D line eventually in the NFL, so you can say whatever you want, and everybody you, you can defend yourself. I'm I'm a little scared though. You've just upset every Cowboy fan that you didn't know what OSU was. Uh, <laughs> so we'll have to we'll edit that out. It's okay, Calvin. We'll edit it out. Um, I want to talk a little bit now. Um, so you you get done playing, and I, I this story was not in your bio, but I heard this rumor. You're working for FCA, and you get a phone call. From the league, so yep. talk about that. You well, know, most people don't take a day job, <laughs> Calvin. Just so you know, it's not like we don't hear these yeah, yeah, stories yeah, where yeah. it's like you're working for UPS and then, hey, <laughs> hey, Todd, I know that you're just delivering uh, healthcare equipment and we need you to come down and play receiver for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, so you're working and get a phone call. Yeah, well, and I realized that that when you get a phone calls, that somebody know you and somebody interceding on your behalf, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. I. I played a place in my World Football League football, a place in Canadian football, mm-hmm. and then I, 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 we came home. I came home. And me and my wife, we got married, and so we were newlyweds, living out in Woodward, Oklahoma. Okay, working for the uh, working for the northern part of of, of Oklahoma for FCA. I'm, yeah, I'm the north, north northwest director, and so. Uh, the territories out there was was, was unique for me, uh-huh. and, uh, and I was unique for them. I'm, you, I'm sure you were. I'm sure you were. But Calvin showing up on campus, uh, there you don't have to say. I understand. But, but made a lot of good friends, mm. and, and and a lot of things. A lot of times when you think something is bad for you, it turn out pretty for the good. Yeah, you yeah. Know, that's I, a great and, point. And I had there some great men of God, mm-hmm. great people of God. You know that that was there. You know for, to help me. Wow. You know, I, I mean, they gave me a company car. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, they, they, they. When I needed to, to get to, uh, to a place, you mm-hmm. know, they flew me, you know, different mm-hmm. places. So I, I had, I had, I had, I had, had air, I had air, wow. air travel. 
uh, it, it was an oasis uh, opportunity, you know, wow. for me. And I think it's, it's how you carry yourself. And, and the people around me, uh, they were just so, you know, awesome people. It's what I thought was, was, was going to be a, a, uh-huh. a, 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 a not a good situation. Right. Trying to be a great situation. You know, it's such a life lesson. And I know you've used that in coaching, right? Who would have thought Northwestern Oklahoma yeah. working for yeah. FCA? Yeah. And yeah. then a phone call yeah. from happens yeah. to be yeah. uh, New York Giants, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. At that time, you know, we was on we was on nine month contract, and so 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 after 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 that nine month mm-hmm. contract, you know, we had to find some other job until in and, and so the first Baptist church in, in Woodward mm-hmm. hired me as the youth director. Okay, <laughs> and Pastor Archer was, was 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 the pastor, and so we were getting ready to get our kids ready to go to Falls Creek and everything, uh-huh. and all of a sudden I get a phone call. And, it, and and it, it was from it was from New York Giants, and it was a, it was a, it was a general manager, and said Jim Stanley, which was one of the coaches, mm-hmm. you know, had had told you, had, had given your name, and, you know, that we we want you to come to New York Giants and play. I said, I mean, I, I, I said, I, and, he, and coach called me. Mm-hmm. He said, hey, Calvin, are you in shape? And I said, Well, I always kind of stay <laughs> pretty well in good yeah, shape. Absolutely. And, and he said, Well, there's, I think Troy Archie and some guys, you know, that went in a car accident. And it lost lost his life. And that was oh. a player for the New York Giants, a defense lineman. Said we 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 need some defense lineman. Mm-hmm. And so he said, "Will you come?" I said, "Coach, I'll come." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you you know, it's interesting. You said it about the Northwest. You you clearly have the spirit that when you felt like you were called to do something, you who was going to say no to that, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, then yeah. the story gets a little better. <laughs> you don't just get picked up because I mean we yeah. we've been around athletics, yeah. Yeah. and I've heard of guys yeah. going to get a cup of coffee. Yeah, but you get to start a yeah. football game. Yeah, well, I mean, right? I mean, yeah. it's not it's not like they just picked you up yeah. and said, "Hey, yeah. we need a yeah. practicing dummy. Yeah. We got to get yeah. some." Um, well, tell me about what that felt like. You know, the, the hardest thing was leaving my wife, and 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 she said, mm. and, and so she she was working for a clothing store. She said, "I'll take the position at at the uh, at the youth director." And so she took wow. over my position, and so I packed my bag and I said, "Honey, I think this is gonna be about two weeks." You know, I get it. I got, that's, I got, a, that's the confidence yeah, you got yeah, yourself, yeah, Calvin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, two weeks. That's how I get to get this out of my system. Uh-huh. And so, lo and behold, I get to count, uh-huh. and, and then and then I got to fight, you know, two for nails oh, for everything yeah. I got. I mean, here I am, you know, but all you know the playing experiences, mm-hmm. and all the things you know that that uh, I've been trained, in, you know, for you know uh, my you know it all come back right. It all come back to me. I found myself, you know, uh, the first the first opportunity we were scrimming against the New York Jets, mm-hmm. and uh, and and we it, it ran a trap block and it, it ran a trap block and they said oh we, you know here come the mm-hmm. guard trap oh, block. Yeah. and I seen that guard come and I, and I jammed, came up on the guard mm-hmm. you know made a tackle and everybody said wow. <laughs> wow! <laughs> so, so you know, uh, I got stronger and I got confidence as time went along. Mm. God, you know, guys tried me, guys trusted me, you know, but you had to be tough, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, and more and more I stayed. I said, more and more I can do this. Okay. You know, and and this and this op- this opportunity can become a reality. Wow! Now, how long were you end up uh, end up staying with the Giants? The whole season, right? I, I, I stayed. Well, I stayed with them all the whole preseason. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and 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 probably one of the greatest things about about that uh-huh. <laughs> that was well, there was a guy uh, uh, that was uh, played at OU, uh-huh. and uh, and uh, we uh-huh. met with LCA guys. Okay, and, and, you know, he said, I didn't know you could still play. Wow, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and uh, I call his name in a few minutes, but uh, but I said yeah, and so so we we were pulling for each other. Okay, and, yeah, you uh, had a and, teammate. And, and, yeah, and so great things, uh, great things happened. Uh, I made it to the made it to the last cut, mm-hmm. and then they released me. Okay, and so I already had it set up from a, from a friend uh, that that uh, didn't do run them, you know, that played with the World Football League. They had they, they was. Uh, Starting a program at Evangel College, okay. and so I went from New York Giants to Springfield, Missouri, okay. and coaching D line at, at Evangel College. Okay. And so we we played about two games. Matter of fact, the last game we played was against UCO. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Evangel wow. played UCO. As we're sitting yeah. in here, that's great. And, and and I and I don't know what in the world we uh-huh. we like a uh-huh. second year program playing UCO, and, and we got we got we got beat beat mm-hmm. down. And so, uh, but when I got back. Uh, New York Giants played, and and two defense linemen went down. Mm. Ray Perkin called me that Monday morning mm-hmm. and said, "Killer, would like for you to come back." And uh, and so then it was uh, then uh, and I was uh, and uh, then then it was was sitting where Mike was, mm-hmm. and he was saying, "Tell him you want a no cut contract." 
<laughs> and, and I said, Coach, I'd like to have a no cut contract if I come back. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Well, Kelly, I can't do you that, but I guarantee you, you'll be with us for the rest of the season. I said, Coach, that's good enough. Okay. All right. That's great. <laughs> that is so good. So when football's over, it's obviously in your blood. You've been pastoring for however many years now, right, in conjunction with coaching. Yes, uh-huh. You're still coaching. Yes, still right? coaching. Yeah. In, in, um, and it's so funny. We've, uh, we've had so many retired coaches – yeah. That seem to still be coaching. <laughs> um, we're gonna have to have like a. We're gonna have to have an intercession and kind of explain <laughs> to you guys what retirement is. But um, I hope I'm doing the same yeah. thing. Yeah. I, I hope. Yeah. I hope yeah. when I'm older, yeah. good Lord's got me in health and I'm still bleeding energy yeah. into some campus yeah. into coaching yeah. something. Yeah. Right. And so, um, walk me through a little bit of your coaching career because you've started off at the bottom like a lot. Yeah. And yeah. then you end up at yeah. one of the ivory towers. Yeah. And um, yeah. and I yeah. know you're still coaching at a place yeah. that you love. Yeah. yeah. Well, by the way, before I go any further, that, okay. that came to me. Phil Tabor was the guy's name. Phil Tabor. Phil Tabor okay. played at OU. Okay. But, oh, wow. uh, but uh, I, I, I uh, when I went to event, left 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 Evangel, went back to New York Giants, and then I went back to camp to New mm-hmm. York, New York the next summer. I, I got cut, and I, and uh, and there was a coach by the name of Bob Lord, Bob Lord, which was mm-hmm. a Christian coach, and he said, "Cal, get excited. If the Lord closed the doors on you, he got something excited for you." And so mm. uh, John Cooper was at, at Tulsa mm-hmm. offered me a chance, you know, to come back and be a GA. Pause on that for a minute. You know, it's so often I think that we think when a door's closed, yeah. we hurt through that, right? Yeah. We feel yeah. rejected. Yeah. We're like, why? Yeah. Why, God? I'm I'm living my life for you. You just close the door on my dream. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I love that perspective. Yeah. That door's closed. Yeah. I'm headed somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. You Absolutely. got you got some other purpose for me. Absolutely. And I, I felt dejected. I felt hurt, mm-hmm. and and I, I I you know I felt like that, you know I played from last season, mm-hmm. played well, you know I, mm-hmm. I I you know we we did great things, you know but uh, uh, I, the new uh, the new D line coach, you know and 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 so uh, you know there was something different, but I I gave it my very best, mm-hmm. and so anyway I was cut, and so I came home and I had some opportunities. Mm-hmm. But during that time, mm-hmm. you know, I, I went in business, you know, doing some things with some water filters that didn't work out. And so, and a friend of mine, that same guy mm-hmm. that played for me, played with me at Oklahoma State, that jumped off the, off the bench and tackled a guy on the sideline. He was a mud engineer, and and so 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 he said, "Man, I I said, man, I need a job." So I get a job out in Western Oklahoma, Wheeling, Texas, roughneck, never had roughneck in my life. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am driving all the way from Tulsa, okay. and 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 I, and I I, I rented a, a, a little, little, little hotel called Sand Hotel in Wheeler, Texas, and wow. I, 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 would, I would I would go there and I would sleep, and I would go back to the rig and work, and so uh, and so uh, I did this, you know, with with one crew and then, and another crew, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they. they, they uh, something happened, uh-huh. and, and so I got hired on to another crew, and and and, and so. Uh, the two pushers said, "Come on back to work, you know, you know." Cause, well, they couldn't get they couldn't get the, the pipe back in the hole, and they said, "Worm." They called me Worm. They said, "Worm." We- hey, who's calling you Worm? I gotta have, <laughs> I gotta have a discussion <laughs> with them. Yeah, that's what they call a, a, a beginner oil field guy when he first started work. Okay, okay, I'm yeah. like, because well, <laughs> and they I- said Worm. He, he said, uh, he said, and they all from Shamrock, Texas. I'm in uh-huh. Wheeler, Texas. They said, they said, uh, you need to find your job because we leaving. You know, and so and so we they left the rig, uh-huh. you know, doing 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 the tower, and so I had to go out there and tell the two push, and I said, Junior, you know, and and he, and he said, what's what's wrong? What's wrong? I said, Junior, my crew walked off away from me. I'm the only one left. What do I do? He said, Oh man, get out of here. Just go up on the, up on the rig and don't let them burn up. And I and and, and okay. said and say you finish your tower out and come back tomorrow and I have you another crew. Wow. And so that's the way it was a lot of changeover. So I, you know, so that's I came back to work. They okay. had another crew, and I worked that crew and it, and and it was some really nice guys. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I get a phone call. Okay. I get a phone call from the Atlanta Falcons. I get a phone call from the Atlanta Falcons. Said coach. They said, Calvin, they said, uh, it's, a, it's a Jim Stanley. He was the D-line coach. Mm-hmm. They said, our guys are hurt. We, we need some guys, you know, to fill in. You're and, just uh, taking phone calls to play in the NFL. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I just, I, my phone never rang like that. I, they, they didn't have my number, Calvin. <laughs> he said, what are you doing? I said, coach, I'm roughneck out here on the wall. Uh-huh. He said, really? That's what you're doing? I said, yeah. I said, coach, I don't know if I'm in shape. He said, oh, you know, said, just come on. I need for you to come on in. He said, he said, but, but before, you know, before, before I say you, you can come in, we have to work this thing out. 
He said they they are, they are talking to another guy, mm -hmm. and he's an all pro guy. Mm -hmm. And and I said, well, who is it? He says Curly Cup. And I said, Curly Cup play for uh, Kansas City Chief. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. I said, oh man, he, he got the job. And I said, you know, coach, mm -hmm. why are you calling me? Yeah. I mean, Curly Cup is a, you know is all pro. Yeah. He said, not so fast. He said, he said your he said your your dollar sign a little bit different than his. <laughs> <laughs> the real motivation that the world doesn't know about the league, right? <laughs> he said, but I'll call you back tomorrow when this thing get worked <laughs> yeah. out. And so sure enough, he called me back. Okay. <laughs> and he said, Killer. He said, we got it worked out. He said, you ready to come, Bo? Mm -hmm. I said, yes, sir. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's funny. You got a nickname named Killer, and yeah. so. I, just so you know, I, I have seen some of your highlights. You were a violent player. So the first thing that I asked was, what do I call you? Reverend, pastor, coach. You're like, no, you call me Calvin. Now you got guys calling you Worm that probably came up to your belly button. You still look like you could play today. Are you taking phone calls after this? Wow. Golly. Calvin, I want you to rub off on me. This is good stuff, man. Um, so NFL closes. Yeah. And then what I love is the trajectory that you turn all that the men had turned into you, right? And yeah. now you've done it all these years, pastoring and coaching. Yeah. 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 Talk about some of those stops because those started off small too. Yeah. But yeah. they ended at the pinnacle. Yeah. And now they ended a place that's special to you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, I always, you know, there was always a calling in my life, you know, with my belief and, and, mm -hmm. and sharing my testimony and sharing mm -hmm. my life story. And 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 from where I come from to where I you know from okay. what, where I've been and how it, my where I journeyed through life and so I I never thought I, I would be called to, to be a pastor mm. you know and so so the, I I was in Oklahoma City and and from from <laughs> from from going to the to Atlanta Falcons and then. Uh, they had, it was a good team. Uh -huh. I played six games for the Atlanta Falcons, but also that when I came back from the Atlanta Falcons, also I, I started receiving calls from from uh, mud companies, engineering companies, want me to go to work for them. So I took a job in Bay, a Bayroad. They okay. sent me to Houston for school, and I finished up my 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 uh, my, my schooling at at Houston at, from Bayroad, and they came back. And at that time, the boom was on. Right. Early eighties, I mean, we mm -hmm. were running left and right. Started out with three, three or four rigs. Now I'm running, running nine rigs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and so and so, uh, I did that. It worked for the Bayroad for a while, and then I, I transferred to another company called Runners Mud Company. And so, the little, I had a, little, a church in Oklahoma City. I, I was going going to church, and then my pastor said, uh, "There's a church out in Bingham, Oklahoma, and they, they needed somebody to preach." And they said, "Well, you go out there and pull that pulpit and, and preach for them." I goes out and they didn't have a pool, they didn't had a, had a, had a, haven't had a past in two years. Okay. And so and I'm on 24 hour call, you know, working work for this mud company, telephone company, credit cards and everything. And uh, and and so I, they said, come back, come back, come back the next Sunday. If every every two Sundays, if every two Sunday in the month, come back the next Sunday. And I said, okay. Mm -hmm. And come, and then the second time, come back the next Sunday. Okay. And all of a sudden they said, well, we're gonna we're gonna make a vote. I said, vote for what? We're gonna we're gonna vote that you be our pastor. <laughs> and I said, "Well, uh, you didn't ask me." So we <laughs> I love that. I love and I was thinking of every reason why you know that I could not do this. Mm -hmm. I didn't have time to do this because mm -hmm. I was twenty-four hour call. You know, you know, had a family, and then, but my calling is spiritually. Yeah, there's not reason why I shouldn't. Wow. So I said, well, you want me to go, you know, walk out? They said, no, we're going to sit right there. They all voted. They all voted United States. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You, 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 it's not funny. So this is something I say, and I, always, I try to use this wording with even the players that I coach and even the people that I'm around at work. I don't believe in coincidences. Yeah. I don't. I think that's a way that the yeah. world gets to yeah. dismiss our yeah. God yeah. intervening in yeah. our life, right? Yeah. These people were like, we see something in Calvin. Yeah. I don't care whether he nominates yeah. himself yeah. for this job yeah. or not. Yeah. I'm nominating him yeah. for this job. Yeah. Yeah. And then they go out and take yeah. that. And I, yeah. I, I really think as Christian men, I think we have to stop saying, well, this is a coincidence or this is because right. right. I, I just right. think that right. dismisses our God living today. Right. right? And Absolutely. being active. Absolutely. And I, and I hate that because I think that's that worldly view to say, well, yeah. you're, you're not playing in the NFL anymore and you need an opportunity yeah. and you're a good speaker yeah. and they ask you to do it. No, yeah. no. God put it on someone's heart to go in yeah. and have a vote about that's a job right. that you yeah. didn't even sign up for. That's right. That's right. Well, in that little small 
you know, church and a small mm-hmm. community, they need a pastor. Mm-hmm. And uh, find some really nice, wonderful people. Mm-hmm. And I came in, and, and at that time, which was very, you know, unusual, two Sundays out of the month, the first Sundays and third Sundays, I, 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 was, I would go to that church and preach. Okay. And so uh, I didn't think I would be there that long, but I okay. wound up staying 13 years. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. You stayed a few years, Calvin. That's yeah, good. Okay. And, and so, so I, I was, I was in petroleum business, and I did. I, I, I was, I was, uh, I would, I would do my, my, mm-hmm. check my wells early in the morning, and then make it to church. Okay. And so wherever I was, I would travel to church. As long as you get your well done, I mean, you know, I, you, you would make it to church. Yep. Sometime my family would meet me at church, or sometime, you know, I, I would be able to bring my family to church. But anyway, when the oil thing went down. And so now I found myself in a, in a stickle, passing a small church, and they started, out, started me out with like, like $30, $30 a Sunday. Mm-hmm. And then it went to $50 a Sunday. Mm-hmm. And then it finally went to $100 a Sunday. Mm-hmm. And so, so finally, I, you know, and so it, it really, I, I, I took, my, took my taxes to the tax man. They said, no, you just don't get that donating your, your service. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, I found myself in a situation, now the oil filled out. I mm-hmm. just I just built a house in Oklahoma City, mm. and now no job. Wow! And so and so and it was a tough time. Yeah, the oil, the, oil, the oil bust yeah, here was yeah. it was brutal. My dad was a yeah, part of it. It yeah, was tough. It, it was a tough time. And so what I did, I started I started commuting from Oklahoma City to Dallas, you know, working construction. Okay. And and then I did that for about six weeks. And I said, well, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna live in Dallas, I'm gonna move to Dallas. Okay. And so at, at, and if if not, I'm gonna find me a job. So, so I began to pray and ask God, you know, to, to, give, to, to give me strength to help me. And so, at, I, and, and, and at that time, I was pretty at the end of my rope. Mm. And, and there, the guy was speaking on TV, on trended broadcast by the name E.B. Hill. And he said, don't give up. Don't give up. And so, you know, I had tears in my eyes, and I sat up on my couch, and I listened to him. Mm. And I started praying, and I said, Lord, I, I, I've doubted you. Mm. I know you're going to bring me through. Mm-hmm. And so I went for an interview the next week to the juvenile, to the Berry House, the juvenile center. I got that job. Okay. Another friend of mine, you know, he said, he said, I got, a, I got another opportunity for you. And I said, what is it? He said, I got three cabs. I want you to drive, drive one of my cabs. <laughs> so, so, so I drove, I drove a yellow taxi cab. Okay. I worked at, the, I worked at the Berry House. Okay. And, and Killer so, in the cab. I can see it right now. <laughs> I, the big, the big D tackle just immediately in the cab. Oh, everyone paid you. I'm sure you never got stiffed yeah. one time in, in that cab yeah. career. And, and, and but see, here's the coincidence. I did that for nine months. Okay. And nine months, you know, I received a call for Langston University. Wow. You know, and, 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 and a guy named Sherbert Leonard mm. called me. He was the athletic director mm. and said, Coach Aiken was the coach. And he said, uh, I told him about you. And he said, I want to, he said, I want to interview you for, for the defense line job. And so I'm, I'm driving from Oklahoma City to, to, to Langston. Mm-hmm. And so I get, I, get to the, I get to the Guthrie turnoff. And all of a sudden, my taxi cab, you know, tire, it kept, kept a flat. Here I'm with a white shirt on, <laughs> neck on, and I got to change the tire. <laughs> and so I finally get to camp with smut all over. <laughs> so the coach was, you know, wonderful coach. And he said, well, mm-hmm. come back come back the next week. Mm-hmm. Came back the next week. Everything went smooth. Okay. And, and second, third time, he said, look, he said, We're gonna, we want you to come and be a, cons- be a consultant mm-hmm. doing spring ball. Okay. And then in, in July, we'll put you on full time. Wow. And so that's how I started. I was in '87. That's how I started my coaching. So you're getting career. another job without applying. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I would have never thought yeah. of all the yeah. things that yeah. we were going to discover yeah. today. Yeah. That how many but, times yeah. that you just keep getting yeah. promoted yeah. Yeah. Uh, by just answering the phone. But great things happen. Mm. You know, I came and and I and, and I worked at I, I, I coached. Yep. And and that season, that season, mm-hmm. it was it was it was, it was an '87 season at Langston. I won't never forget it. Yep. And I, I, we, 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 we had a season. We, we had ten games. We didn't win a game. Mm. It was zero and ten. Mm. And, and and so so coach said we got to find some players. We got to find some players. I said coach, I know where I'm at. And he said where are you at? I said well, we need to go to Mississippi Junior College. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> so we took a seventeen passenger van. Okay. Went down to Mississippi. Lowered old guys up. And, 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 and started bringing some guys. I love it. I love it. And, and so, and so we, we recruited about 13 kids in mid, in, in, in mid, mid semester. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, I get a call. I get a call mm-hmm. from Dave Rader from University of Tulsa. Mm. And Dave Rader was my teammate 
yep. at, at, with the New York Giants. Oh, yeah. And he said, Calvin, he said, I just received a job at, at University of Tulsa. And, uh, and he said, I want to hire you as my D-line coach. And I said, Dave, I've just been here for about nine months. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, he said, well, I said, what about next year? Mm -hmm. He said, Calvin, I don't know what the job going to be here for next year. He said, I'm offering you a job right now. Wow. And, uh, and so I went to Ron Aiken, which, which Ron Aiken was a very good coach, and, uh, and, and, and not really knowing through, throughout his career, he become a legendary coach. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he, he said, Calvin, he said, go and take that job. Wow. And, you know, take your spring break, take that job. If you like, if if you if 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 you like it and you think it's gonna work out, uh -huh. just drop me drop me a line, drop me a letter, and send a resignation. Okay. And so that, I went and did that, and, and, I, and that's what happened. Yeah. And uh, and I said, well, Coach, I recruited all these players. Hate to leave them, but yet and still I have another opportunity. Mm. And so, but God, but God blessed me. What I prayed for, God blessed me with another opportunity. Mm. And three years later. You know, from from University of Tulsa, mm -hmm. and coaching fine players, and and, oh, yeah. and, and working with Coach Thurman, and uh -huh. and and, and uh, Coach Dixon, and Dave Raider, uh, other fine coaches, and then uh, Pat Jones called me and offered me a job at Oklahoma State, yeah. and and Dave came in and said and said, Cal, it's it said uh, here's an opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, at, at Oklahoma State, and I said, Dave, he said he said you got to take it. I said, why I got to take it? <laughs> he said. It's more money for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said, he said, man, I want to keep you, but, yeah. you, but you, you know, but here's the opportunity for you. Yeah. And I said, okay. Uh, Kenny Polk had left Mississippi State. Yeah. So, so I go, I goes to, I goes to uh, Oklahoma State and I wind up coaching. I, uh, I coached Dennis Bird mm -hmm. and I coached Mike Ross and I mm -hmm. coached some, some of the finest defense linemen mm -hmm. that were there. Mm -hmm. And so, so I go to Oklahoma State and I, I started, I, I coached Jason Gildon and then Javon Langford. And so, That's so right. uh, then I get to, I get to Oklahoma State. And they coming on probation. Now they are, well, they're on probation. They do, you know, and oh, so, that's right. And so we only won the, the first year. We won. I think we tied one game. <laughs> and I'm going, man. <laughs> so, so, uh, and and then uh, that was. Uh, I was with Coach Jones in '91. Then things happened, you know, in '92, '93, '94, and then Coach 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 Jones uh, decided to retire. Mm -hmm. And so now Coach Simmons coming in, yep. and so he said, "I'm gonna send you to the weight room." And I said, "Coach, I want to coach." Mm -hmm. And so I so you know I started praying, to, uh, "What am I gonna do?" And a lot of people said, "Man, you, you know, you, you know." One and one guy said, "You said you've been a good guy and a religious mm -hmm. guy. You see, you know, you know they always say good things happen to you. Yep. You know, so so you ever ask the question why this happened to you?" And I said, "Man, it's gonna work out." And then wow. I get a call from 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 uh, Bill Curry from University of Kentucky, mm -hmm. and so Bill Curry called me, you know, and said, well, "We'd like for you to come." And so I go I go to Kentucky, mm -hmm. and they offer me a job. Yep. And and I coached in that was SEC, and I coached I coached there for two years, and then I, uh, Mac would talk about LSU. Mm -hmm. We uh, the first year we played LSU at at, at Kentucky, mm -hmm. we we beat them with an a, a emotional win. Okay. The next year we go we go down there to uh, to LSU. They return the favor. Yeah, the line is rolling, <laughs> and, and the, the fans the fans and you know all over you and everything, and we get beat down like a drum. Wow. And, and we, it's amazing how they remember <laughs> those things. Yeah. And we came home, and uh, we had an open date, mm -hmm. and, and we had four games left. Uh -huh. On an open date that Monday morning, we come in, C.M. Newton was the athletic director, come in and said, "Guys, I'm going to let you go." I said, wow. "Now we're getting fired." Wow. And, and so and so we and so but we had four games left, and one of the most dramatic things that ever happened to me in my life, my coaching career. Okay. It's, it's something that really changed my life. So so we went through that whole week of open date. You know, we, you know, the coaches were real close together. We hung together. And then that, 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 that Sunday, Coach Curry comes in with two boxes. He comes in with a T-shirt. And he said, guys, we got four games left. We're going to run the table. We haven't won one game this year. And we got four games left. We got Mississippi State. We got Georgia. We got Vanderbilt. And uh -huh. we got Peyton Manning at Tennessee left. And we're going to run the table. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> but Coach Curry was a very positive, motivated guy, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and so and so 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 our journey began, and so our journey began. We played Mississippi State. We beat them. We played Georgia. Wow. High and Wars was on that team. We beat them. We played Vanderbilt, which we hadn't beat in a while. We checked them out, 
And now we we playing between 105, 106,000 people in in in, in, in you know, at the University of Tennessee. Yeah. And uh, and and we first quarter we hanging in there. Second quarter, and all of a sudden Pey- Peyton Manning got hot. He, and, and then <laughs> three and one. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't win that one, but yet and still it learned me how to coach. Yeah. And when you're back against the wall, yeah. That what you do is coach. Well, you know it's interesting. I love that story because I think as coaches, sometimes we have to share our players what we ask them to do, yeah. which was commit regardless, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. you guys were committed to the season, yeah. and yeah. you were committed to those yeah. young men. Yeah. And regardless of what that finished like, there's yeah. probably some incredible stories that have yeah. come out of those young men that's because right. we've, we've all seen it. I've been yeah. on a staff that's been let go, yeah. and they gave up, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. does not feel good, yeah. right? Yeah. Those guys took that took took. We had two, two K's on the helmet. Took one K off, mm. and 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 every game we won, Coach Kerber said, "I knew you can do it. Wow. This is the team I've been looking for. Mm. This is the Wildcat team. Yeah. You know that, that 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 I knew that you had it in you." And he said, "And he said, I I believed in the coaching staff. I believed in the players. Mm. I knew you can do it. Mm. And, and and we celebrated like every game was a Super Bowl. Wow." <laughs> Wow. I love that. I love that. So of all the stories that you've sat here and shared, you talk about the one you got fired. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And how it galvanized you. Yeah. And then the success around that. So yeah. then it doesn't end there, right? Because yeah. God's got favor for yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. So, so tell us what that looks like. Well, you know, you know, Coach Butler talked about there are some situations in, in life that, mm-hmm. some, you know, the journey is not going to always be smooth. But you can learn, you know, from those situations. Yeah. And so I, I, so, so, so I, I was, uh, we got fired and then they called us all in. Mm-hmm. Hal Mummy, which, which, which was the coach that came in. Yeah. And, and, and so he said, guys, I, I won't need none of your service. Mm-hmm. And so I go back down the hall. All of a sudden, Jack Flegg came back, come, come, come down the hall and said, Coach Mummy need to see you. Okay. And so I go back in and I, and, and said, I said, Cal, Cal, come on in, come on in, mm-hmm. come on in. I said, "What's up, Coach?" Mm-hmm. And he said, uh, "He said, he said, can you, can 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 you recharge? We like to keep you here at Kentucky. Can you recharge?" I said, "Coach, I can recharge, but I can relocate." <laughs> yeah. And he said, "Well, I'm gonna give you five thousand dollars more. I'm gonna keep you on." I said, "Yes, sir, Coach." <laughs> <laughs> I can recharge. Yeah, yeah. I can recharge. Yeah, so so I stayed on. That. I stayed. Uh-huh. I stayed on with them. Recruited with them, and then all of a sudden, you know, in, after that, at, after that recruiting season. Mm. I get a phone call, mm. another phone call, another phone call from Bob Simmons at Oklahoma State, yep. and and he and he said he said Coach, he, he said uh, the uh, D line the D buddy buddy left the D line mm-hmm. jo- job is open, and so and so I I want to know will you be interested, and I and I said Coach. And, and, and of course, I had an inside at mm-hmm. Oklahoma State say, "Hey, you need to you need to call Coach Simmons." Okay. And, and, and so, which was Pitt. He called. <laughs> he called me. And so, so I I go and, and so so Co- Coach Simmons goes and calls Coach Uzelak and calls some of the coaches. Called Bill Curry. Mm-hmm. And they said, "Man, this guy, this guy is the best guy we have on our staff." Wow. And and so so they offered me considerable amount for you know two years after I left mm-hmm. Oklahoma State. Now uh, to a, come a, back. A, a considerable amount coming back. Wow. We we come back and this and this end was the year of ninety seven. Oh, at ninety seven we 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 comes in at Oklahoma State, and uh, and I'm coach D line coach coaching D line, and I had one of the most outstanding D linemen with Jamal William. Oh, I know. <laughs> I was at OU then. <laughs> Andre Waddle, uh, Courtland Mallory, and 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 then uh, and then a uh, 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 guy named Weaver. I mean, and they and they played. Oh yeah. And and so we. Before, before we know it, we was eight and zero. Oh, I know. And so that tells me, you know, that that when you know when things happen to you, mm-hmm. you know, God got something better for mm-hmm. you. And then, uh, then we I won. think I vaguely remember. I blacked it out. Didn't you shut us out on Owen Field that year? <laughs> was that a, is that a memory of mine? I think I was dreaming. It was a nightmare. It was a freaking nightmare. Um, I believe a kid playing wide receiver named Rashawn Woods. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, I yeah. just threw up a little bit, Calvin. Yeah. I, just, I thought we were wow. Yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah, yeah, what a what a great season. Yeah, and um, I think I think that was in two thousand. That was in two thousand one. 
you know, and that was the last game I coached for OSU. Okay. With, with Les Miles. Okay. And uh, and so again, Simmons got let go, and, yeah. and then let my Les and Miles kept you kept me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So because from there was a great run for our, for OSU yeah. from you yeah. know ninety six ninety seven. Yeah. Simmons yeah. got it run. Yeah. Les continued yeah. it on. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, you know and then you know I coached you know people like uh, Kevin William. Uh, 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 of course, Jamal William, and later on Kevin William, mm -hmm. and, and then Jaquay, Jaquay Parker, yep. and all those guys, and they went on, went on and, and played. But uh, but we we had some we had some tough battles, you know, between mm -hmm. Oklahoma and, and, oh, yeah. and, and OSU. Yeah. yeah, it was tough. And, uh, um, real quick, and not quick, and I, man, I'm just so graced by your time. So thank you, Pastor. Right? Yeah. Pastor. <laughs> so you're pastoring me here with your stories. I want I want to think about one thing. Um, you've you've gotten to share about those doors opening and closing for you and seeing your faith in them. Mm -hmm. How have you translated that to the men that you've coached? Well, uh, you know, the men I coach, I always try to, you know, to, to encourage them about life mm. as well as football. And the football is a, is a very parallel example of life. I understand. It, you know, we have the ups and downs. We're gonna mm -hmm. get knocked down. We got to get up. But most of all, I said, guys, you know, you know, it, there, there's there's something greater than football, mm. and, yep. and 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 it's life, and it's how you live your life. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, the going the, 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 the going going to get tough, mm -hmm. but yet still you hang in there with your family. You hang in there with your business. Yeah. You hang in there, you know, with your career. And I I never forget, you know, that that uh, I've watched Kevin William play, and and that. I watched them play against uh, Minnesota against Green Bay, and they won a, tr a, a dramatic game. And so I called Kevin. I said, "Congratulations!" Mm -hmm. He said, "Killer! Not only you taught me a lot about football, you taught me a lot about life." Mm -hmm. And then, uh, uh, since you know, since, uh, since I was at Langston right before I tired, mm -hmm. you know, I received a phone call and said, 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 "Killer, I want you to come to the Minnesota Vikings." So we played a, a, a team in Arkansas. Okay. I, at Sunday morning, I got up, I flew into in the Saint uh, uh, Saint Paul, Minnesota. And they picked me up, mm -hmm. and I went to I went to the press box, and then Kevin William was getting inducted into the Ring of Honor. Wow! And, and, uh, wow! You, you talking about tears in your eyes? Wow! You talking about tears in your eyes? Wow! You know to see guys like Kevin William, guys like Dennis Bird, yeah, guys like Jason Gillen, yeah, guys like Jamal Williams, you know, you know, a guy like Javon Langford, and, and some of those guys have been through some in some tough time. But yet and still, you know, you know sure in life, yeah. you know, and you know, to see those guys succeed. But yet and still, there are yeah. guys that never had made a spotlight even more successful than them. Yeah. Killer, of all the people that I thought was going to sit on my couch and make me cry, I didn't think it was going to be you. Okay. <laughs> so, um, man, um, you know, the one thing that I've noticed in my brief time coaching is the men and women that coach for life. Yeah. They coach those players forever. Yeah. They're part of it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The ones that want to better themselves. Yeah. And it's about money or fame or the next job. Yeah. That fire that burns for them. Yeah. It can't sustain yeah. it. They can't recharge. Yeah. yeah. And so, man, I, I, I love that you yeah. can recharge. Well, it, you know, I look at coaching. Mm. I look at pastoring. Mm. And, and, and Billy Graham says, I coach will make a will make a a, 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 a a year a lifetime impact oh yeah more than what a pastor does I understand and 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 when you coach those guys mm -hmm. from all different walks of life yeah. you know and, and from all different backgrounds mm -hmm. and, and 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 when you coach them and you get into their heart and get into mm -hmm. their soul mm -hmm. and, and 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 they and, and they learn so much from you mm -hmm. you know and and I, I think it's one of the greatest ministry deals. I, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I, I've never felt called to the, yeah. the pulpit at all. Yeah. yeah. But I have felt called to the field. Yes. yes. In all sports. Yes. yes. Uh, I've been yes. on small campuses yes. where they're like, hey, we don't have a ninth grade basketball yes. coach. I'm like, I'll yeah. show up. <laughs> uh, I love hooping. Yeah. yeah. Who, yeah. What short yeah. guy doesn't like hooping, yeah. right? You yeah. know, I always lived the dream, yeah. wanted to be the guy. Yeah. Um, you know, I have, t I have two questions to, that, I wanna, that I want you to answer because it's unique. Um, if you were to talk to today's coaches and encourage them to keep coaching, what would you say to them? I would I would say make sure that this is what you want to do. Mm. You, you know, because it's just like pastoring, make sure okay. that you got the calling, you feel the calling, okay. because you're not going to get rich 
you know, mm-hmm. coaching, mm-hmm. or you're not going to get rich passing. Of course, they play a lot of coaches with money these days. Yeah. You know, well, <laughs> high school level, even the low college yeah. level, right? Yeah. I mean, these yeah. are these yeah. are uh, very yeah. entry level business jobs. Yeah. But your heart got to be in it. Yeah. I mean, you, and you have to really care for the people. Mm. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, there's coaches that dog the players, mm. but yet still, you know, you know, you, you know, you have to, you have to have a, a sensitivity, uh, a tight spirit, a sensitive type attitude yeah. to find out what those kids, what 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 those kids is, or what their students is, and and to encourage them mm-hmm. and help mold them, you know, to be what they can be, yeah. and and then sometimes, it, it, you know, you know, they have to set the pail down, yeah, because they can't handle it. But 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 a lot of times you got to teach them how to carry the pail. Mm, I, I, I never forget at, at Langston University, and, and we had some undefeated teams. Oh yeah. And there was a guy named Jam- Jamal Finney, and and he was uh, he's a guy recruited off the off the internet, you know, from 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 my, from, my, from, my, from my Seattle, Washington, and and so when he came in, and he said, man, I just can't stand you, I just can't stand you, and then he tried to transfer, you know, and then and then but he but he, but he. He stayed with me, mm. and then the last two years, I mean, he said, "Coach, you're the best thing that ever happened to me in my wow. life." Yeah, you know, it, it, I didn't have a father. Mm. He was the man in the gap. Mm. He said, "Coach, I got a degree, I got a job." Yeah, and he said, "He said, he said, I, I, I contributed my success, you know, to you." Yeah, he said, "Coach, you never gave up on me." I didn't like you at first. He said, "Coach, but but as, as I begin to understand mm-hmm. what you were saying, the hard work, the dedication." Mm-hmm. The commitment, and he said, "Coach, thank you." Wow. Uh, I want to do something that's a little bit unique. I want you to close us with prayer. Okay. 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 Awesome, God. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, to for this opportunity to sit in the midst of this camera and share, Lord, the the, the testimony and share what life, Lord, have have what what life journey being within you, you know, the effects and the greatest thing that ever happened to you. And Father, I, I just thank you, Lord, for for just being here. I thank you, Lord, for this school. I thank you, Lord, for the setting. And Lord, I once coached here, Father, and, and, and I can I can feel a spirit, Lord, of, 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 of inspiration here. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for how you have molded us, how you have shaped us, how you have gave us strength, Lord, how, how you have took life, ex, life situation, life example from one place to another place and just mold us to where we are today. And Father, we, I just want to say thank you and I praise you and I glorify you. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for this show, Father, for it exposes men in their lives and what they have been through and how they have touched lives and how they're still touching lives. And oh God, we pray, Lord, Lord, that this production, Father, will, will be successful, mm-hmm. and Lord, and that we would, it, would, it would accomplish great things. And Father, to you be the glory. And your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. I got to give you a hug. You. Come on. I'll help you up. I'll help you up. <laughs> Big killer right here. Big killer, get out of the camera. I got to help you up, man.